10 anglers, five competition days, two groups, yes, and one trophy. Come on! The YPC Bank UK 2023 is proudly brought to you by Predator Tackle and LMAB. Every great story starts with a cast. Hello and welcome to the eighth episode of the YPC Bank UK and thus to the decision in Group B. Which two anglers will be joining AD and Ryan in the final? Alone at the top of the table is Chris Bartle, who may still need one more upgrade to make things safe for him. Behind him, Tom Hunt and Ash Costa are battling it out for second place, with Tom having a full card but still some weak fish on his board. Ash has spent the morning collecting top water points and has significantly better fish in the ranking than Tom. However, he is still missing two pike and considering how the morning has gone, these will be no easy feat to catch. George Lamb has had a tough morning. Wanting to fill the bonus fish with pike before turning his attention to perch, he's had absolutely no fish at all. He needs an outstanding afternoon to get back into the mix. Not outstanding, but monumental, verging on a miracle, is what the last four hours will have to be like for Tom Knight. So far, he's been plagued by bad luck throughout the tournament. It remains to be seen whether the tide will turn or not. But for the moment, George, at least, still has a smile on his face. Welcome back to part two of day two. We are using a similar method to how we finish things off at the first half of this trip. However, it's not been going that well, so we might switch things up soon. But to start, we are using the headbanger shad in a sort of roachy, but also quite red pattern. Got some nice features to fish. So hopefully we'll get some more points because last episode we didn't get any more. This is how desperate we're getting. I'm tying up a drop shot. But desperate times call for desperate measures. And, well, at least I've just about managed to get a drop shot rigged together. Ash caught on a drop shot. He had a couple of nice perch on a drop shot on the first day. So um, sometimes when they are in that really lethargic mood. I'm starting on a new venue. I've never been here before. Got a little bit of local intel. There's some perch in here. Um, we're just gonna give it our best shot. I'm having a good time. Uh, may the best man win. My prediction actually is that I definitely think Ginger Fisherman, he only needed one pike today and he's on like 450. My bet is if Ash can get a couple of pike, I think he's in with a really good, good chance. Um, we're really struggling, but maybe everyone's struggling. Um, really sunny really flat no wind and just not very nice conditions we will see what we can do a very accurate assessment of the situation the other tom however seems to have regained some hope turned up on my second location and you could probably tell by my tone of my voice uh, i think i've chose right as i'm walking down a lot of anglers saying oh there's plenty of predators around there's there's loads of uh pike smashing there was a guy fishing opposite you were for two hours and he's had loads of pike so fingers crossed i'm now hoping that i can pull off a couple of top water quick then onto the perch we've moved spot again just quickly fan casting and then we're moving again so we uh trying to cover as much water as possible just to find not after particularly big pike just a couple over 45 centimeters and the plan is to get two pike, fill the card, and then spend the last part of the day trying to grind out a really, really big perch. But to do that, we've got to get two pike. So to do, I've gone back onto the drag spin again. Uh, one thing that I did forget to mention about this lure is the fact that the two trebles are connected to the lure by swivels. So you get full 360 rotation. So when you do hook a pike and it's thrashing about, because it has got that rotation, you are going to lose a lot less pike. So it's just another really good feature of this lure. So um, I can't wait for the autumn to come uh, to get here 
and uh, into the winter months to really, really pull it through its paces. One thing that you do have to contend with all the time when you're fishing these drains is the weed. There are ways that you can you can beat it, but it's not. It's more perch orientated than for pike. So what I would normally do in this situation, I don't think I would have much of a chance getting the pike. So we just basically fit the spin drag. The fact that it's such a slow sinking bait, we can just let it sink to just above the weed. And it's to be fair for a big lure like that that's got two great big treble hooks on. It has performed really well. All I did then was scare all the perch. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a pike. No, he's preoccupied. I think he's following the perch around. Damn it. I thought for sure he was going to get him. It's like perfect top water size. And Jack said a super aggressive. Damn it. Damn it. Oh, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. He's coming. Speed as well. There we go. There we go. Two. Two strikes. That was two strikes on that bait then. Before it took it. It's only a small fish. I hope it counts because this will be another bonus point for the top water fish. It's got to get it through these reeds, a bit of jungle warfare. But I'll just say now, they tend to be sat in amongst these reeds out of the sun, especially when it's a warm day like today. There we go. Oh no, when he come off. <laughs> After all that, never mind. We can get another bonus top water fish, that's no problem. Chris takes it like a champ, while Tom now turns back to an old faithful. Just swapped over to the uh, to the Rapala DT. No introduction needed. A lot of people know that lure and like that lure all over the world. Uh, great for catching pike and perch. Just having a little swap over. From the shad to the the cranky shad in a very natural pattern, just because this water's so clear and there's a lot of bait fish around, something like that. That's what I'm going to go for for now. Anyway, it's got two trebles on it, which um, could be a bit of an issue with all this weed. Again, it's got a good rattle in it. You can actually take the lip off these, but I, I like to keep the. Uh, the cranky action with the lip on. Well, that won't be breaking any records, but at least we've had a bite. Never seen this place before. Cool, okay. I'm uh, very fortunate to be with a company like Westin because we get to use pieces of art like this. This is the W10, so this is the top of the range. It's called the Finesse TNC. It's like basically our, our all round perch fishing rod and it is just, it's just glorious to use. Um, unlike any other rod I've got, super lightweight, super powerful, super fast action. Oh, it's just, it's such an awesome rod. Fish on, fish on. It's not a big one, but that's another one on top. Well, that's a bonus fish. Oh, he's, oh no, so he's still on, Jesus. He's slight behind me then, I can't believe how fast he moved then. He's got one hook in the mouth and one hook on top of his head. That's why he's tricky. Oh, just missed him. We have beaten the smallest perch, so it is an upgrade. It's 61 centimetres exactly. Smashed on the top water, I spotted this fish down the canal. I said to the old cameraman, we need to get the drone up, down there near the bridge, pointing this way. I know that fish is gonna take it. It was up in the water, it was moving. First cast, bang, absolutely smashed it. And cracking little jack pike, super healthy. We're gonna get him back quickly because it is getting warm now. That is an awesome way to carry on with this session. And of course, the one who needs it least gets it. Another 24 points go to Chris's account. And unless something completely crazy happens here, this fish should secure the ticket for the final. 
Small fun fact, a pike of exactly the same size would be enough for Ash to overtake Tom by one centimetre. So we've, um, we've moved again, but these pike are just absolutely kicking our ass at the minute. I had a hit on the drag spin, but it was like a bit of a half ass one right at the start of the day. Since then, the pike have just been really elusive. I'm sure we've probably covered some, but again, this is not the best pike if, um, fishing weather. So we could be in for a long final couple of hours. I mean, down here, we were just packed up fishing that there was a, just be careful of the other side because there was an otter. Sure enough, I've come a little bit further downstream and uh, there's dead perch on the bank that the otters have been eating. So there are perch here. It's just trying to catch one. I've just put the uh, the free rig on. It's a rig that I like using on the uh, on the rivers for perch. I don't. I'm I'm nowhere. I'm I'm not going to win the competition now. So just after a fish. Nobody likes to blank, but it's looking that like that's what's going to happen. Unfortunately. So as you can see, we are back on the road taking a huge risk. There's only about two and a half hours fishing time. I've not added anything to my card at all today. So I thought the combination of the bright conditions and the water clarity just making things absolutely impossible to catch fish. So what we're doing is we are driving half an hour. We're using up half an hour of our two and a half hours time left to move to a completely different section of the canal and hopefully that's where we'll find some more fish. Anyone who had hoped that the fish would really turn on in the afternoon have been disappointed so far. But the less time there is on the clock, the higher the probability that we'll get to see a heart-stopping final here. It's coming for the bait, it's gonna get it. There we go. Nice pitch, nice pitch. That's an upgrade, it's gotta be. Please stay on. Good old method, letting it sit in the weeds, gently twitching it. Yes! That's got to be an upgrade. It's a nice looking fish anyway. His nose is touching the board. Oh yeah, definitely an upgrade. Nose touching the board. Make sure it's flat. That is exactly 34 centimetres. And that is an upgrade. And it's a stunning fish at that. Worked on the tactic I love using on the canal. Just letting that bait sit in the weed. They don't like it on the sand. I chucked it on the sand at first, didn't care. Chucked into the weed, sat there twitching it for a few minutes before he eventually went down and took it. Probably thought it was a little dragonfly or damselfly larvae. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful indeed. A few more plus points for Chris, who is now over a hundred points ahead. Meantime, George, has probably rolled his final dice. So what I'm choosing to use for this last sort of couple of hours is a headbanger shad. This is actually a sinking one though, same sort of natural pattern because this water is a lot clearer than I thought it was gonna be. But yeah, you can get these in sinking and suspending. So really excited about this. Hopefully it's gonna be able to fish just a little bit deeper in the water than what I have been doing. And hopefully that's gonna help me get anything. I've sort of given up on the perch for now. I just want a pike. I just want to catch one more pike before the end of this competition and I will be happy. Oh, he's come off. So we've just finally had the first hookup with a pike today. It weren't a massive fish, but it was definitely a 70 plus. We have fished a lot of areas today we have had, apart from one half hour strike earlier on, we've had no luck whatsoever. We've dropped on a new spot on the way to a lake and um, we've had a fish probably like a 70 plus, uh, take a boomer, really good hit, but unfortunately he's come off. But it has given something else to think about now because now we're in a spot that possibly is holding some pike. We've not seen any pike bar that one strike earlier on so it's encouraging but at the same time absolutely gutting because we needed that fish but it's how it goes it's fishing the end of the day that was really really unfortunate but you know this um, it happens but we've still got plenty of time left to get another one so it might be worth persevering with this section of uh, drain might put on a slightly bigger boomer 
with a matte finish just because this uh, this sun was hoping was going to uh, go in for a little bit because I did forecast some overcast weather today but um, it's just not happened yet. So I've just got no idea where these pike are. I'm seeing roach coming to the top everywhere. That's not really normal for this stretch, seeing so many roach on the surface and they're not getting chased around by anything. So either the pike aren't here or they're just not feeding whatsoever. But either way, it's making my life extremely difficult. Right guys, it's absolutely blazing hot. There is zero wind. Um, I wanna know what you guys would do. If you were in my situation right now, would you power fish with like a chatterbait or a crankbait or a big plastic looking for a reaction strike or would you finesse fish? So um, stick it in the comments below because I want to count them up. I want to see who would do what and which way it would go in these conditions because got to be honest, I don't think I've got the answer. Right. <laughs> he's not going to count. Yeah, there's no point even putting him on the map, bless him. Hang on, let me just, no, well off. Right, so the problem is with the drains is when it, in the summer it is so weedy, you don't really have too much options of what you can do to change. Um, you can change color, things like that. It's difficult because I know now, we have had a pike now, but he was under legal size. We lost that one that was probably a low 70. So there's going to be more pike in this section, but it's how long do you grind it out before you make that decision to drop on that lake, which is going to be a gamble purely because, I say personally, I've, I've never fished it. I know there's some big fish in there. So that will be where we finish up. But the fact that there are pike here, it is tempting just to um, just give it that extra couple more minutes just to get one, knowing that we're going to that lake only needing one fish would be like a massive confidence booster, but it's um, it's been hard. If we would have been a completely different story if we would have got that pike in earlier, but we, we got unlucky there. Right guys, got an hour and a half left. Um, changed my top, arms are getting burnt. Uh, had a drink, had an energy bar, final hour and a half. Basically, I think I'm looking for one bite. I've only had one bite already today, but that's about it. It's gonna be a tough one, so we've gotta grind out one more bite, hopefully a good perch or maybe an upgrade pike. It's a tough one. I can guarantee there's a pike under there, a big one. I can guarantee there's a big pike under there. There's about 10 chub and I've seen a handful of barbel. There's no way a pike would, would not be in this area because that's what they're preying on, the small barbel and, and the chub. I'm really confident with that pike bait. So one last roll of the dice, we are changing spots again. About an hour left. This goes beyond the competition now. This is just me against the fish. I just really, really, really want to see another pike on the bank before the end. The heat is just exhausting. The casting away with no bites, no follows, no nothing. It's been a tough day. We're within the last hour now with the competition. From what I've seen on the other venues that I've been on, the weather has played quite a big part in me not catching, especially on the canal, seeing all the fish on the top. I probably should have come to the river, I think, earlier on in the day, but I never. That's my fault. And they're definitely, I think, holding more in the oxygenated uh, areas. So I probably could have chose my, my peg, my swims a little bit better and probably chose this weir and another one, but it, it is what it is. So I'm just going to fish this till the end now.
got to admit though, it's um, it's a pretty exciting format on the second day, which is today for, for us, for Group B. Um, obviously no one knows what anyone else has caught. So I'm super excited to get back and like, have I done enough? Has it been super tough for everyone else? Have I made completely horrendous decisions and everyone else has got it right and caught more and overtaken me? Um, so yeah, it's quite exciting, but um, it's been a fantastic competition. I've absolutely loved it. I'm so goddamn sure there must be a pike under there. I've said it a million times already now. I'm saying that. Even if there is one down there, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to catch it. We need to find a pike. We need a big pike. Oh, spooked all barbel out. Here's a few barbel. Some of them are only a few pounds. Perfect pike eating size. If I was a pike, I'd be at the back of the swim. I know, I know there's going to be one under there. Oh, there we go. That's a small one. Woo, <laughs> I made the heart race anyway. <laughs> Watch this. Look at the water. It's got to come back for that. There we go. Oh, it's come back for it again. Oh, it's right under my feet. It went for it. Oh, my rigging was out. I wonder why it got, went funny when it got close to it. Well, it's not exactly the monster pike I was hoping for in this swim. So before we get to the next spot, the last spot of the day, I'm putting this on and that's what I caught the 80 centimetre pike on the other day. Really excited about this. I'm not necessarily putting this on because I think it's the best thing to use, just because of the sentiment behind it. I always think sentiment plays a big role in fishing. So that's going on the heavy setup. Then on the lighter setup, I will show you the action of this when we get there. I am using the head banger banger rib so this is actually designed to be rigged weedless but i like the exposed hook point that's why i'm sort of fishing it on a jig head there's a small chance you might even pick up a nice perch on this so we're on the final venue of the day it, it's a big risk because uh, i've never seen this venue before never mind fished it it looks absolutely stunning whether we can catch any pike out of it is yet to be seen it's um <laughs> it's so hot it is so uncomfortable to fish in so all we need is two little jacks and it's job done but i've never struggled so hard in my life to catch small perch and small pike it has been a real grueler of the two days it's it's sort of semi-successful really because we've we've done what we wanted to do on the perch front we've got we've got two 40s a 29 and a 30 we've got the free top water perch which is what i wanted to do the pike, this is where sort of competition experience comes into it and my lack of it. The first day, the perch really weren't on it. After we had them first two decent fish and they was a real grind to get those. Um, possibly then I should have thrown the towel in for the perch and gone for the pike because today is the perch have been a lot more active and a lot more aggressive and the pike have just been nowhere to be seen. So in hindsight, I would have done it differently, but there's nothing we can do about it now. It's been really good. Um, everything that you don't see off a camera, all the lads that are fishing it, they've all been absolutely brilliant. Really, really good uh, banter off camera and that between everyone. Everyone's got on really well. It's um, It's been a cracking week. It's just these uh, these bloody pike, but it's out of this fish in the end of the day. His composure has been impressive all along, but could it be that Ash has played his hands slightly wrong here? The final spot must deliver. While ideally for him, no one else catches anything. Oh, you're joking. I've bloody hooked one. Oh my God, me and the cameraman, we're just talking. <laughs> it's gotta be a pike. Don't know if it's an upgrade, but... Hope so. wrapped in the line. Come on. Well, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Out of nowhere. Uh, might be a little upgrade. Might be. Right, let's find a bit of nice grass. Me and the cameraman just been chat, 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 chatting and I've just been casting. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, 
It was a bite, scared the life out of me. Right, let's see if we uh, got ourselves an upgrade. 60, oh, it is a tiny upgrade. 66. 66, that'll do. From a 64. <laughs> Oh man, that was funny. There we go, straight back. Oh my God, that scared the life out of me. <laughs> oh cool, well, 66, I think I had a 64. So it's a tiny upgrade, but man, it was so tight yesterday, uh, watching the other group that who knows, maybe that might be the extra two points I need. Right, well, let's keep walking the bank and chatting, Mr. Cameraman. <laughs> we were having a right old conversation there and then just out of the blue. <laughs> totally wasn't expecting it, but it was good fun. Oh, here we go, Tom's yo-yo emotions of the day. I've been down and up and down and up. <laughs> oh, you got to love fishing, man. Got to love fishing. It only takes, you know, one tiny little thing to happen and then all your senses are back online again and you're totally back into it. That was really cool. This upgrade certainly doesn't put Tom out of reach, but it's still nice to get something out of the water after this long dry spell. The others now only have 20 minutes left. Will we see a photo finish here or will the hope for nail biting finale fail to materialize? Mate, I can say I've never been so relieved to catch a small pike in my life. We still need one more, but we got an actual chance now. So let's quickly get this one measured and put back. Yeah. Right, okay, so he's 60, two and a half. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Nose is up against there, yeah. So we've just had this 63 centimetre pike on a uh, bladed jig, one of the boomers um, in 10 gram with a whiz trailer. I've never been so relieved to catch a fish like this. It's been an absolute grueler today on the pike front. We've literally got 15 minutes left. So we're gonna get him back really quickly and then we're just gonna just flog the lake to death, just hoping that we just drop on one more. So, I'm so happy with that fish. Yeah, that was hard fought that fish. That was tough. Can you believe it? Cool as a cucumber ash does some precision work and moves into second place by exactly one point. With less than a quarter of an hour to go, the ball is suddenly in Tom's court. Will he have one more chance to make a comeback? That's well and truly behind a rock. Top tips on getting your lure back. So there's uh, always try and change the angle and the pinging technique. You do need a bit of fluor, make sh if you haven't got any fluorocarbon in your setup, it doesn't really work because you're, you're stretching the fluorocarbon and then letting it go. And the shock as it pulls it back, sometimes shoots it back out from underneath the rock. But um, yeah, change the angle and use that pinging technique. That's the best chance of getting it back. Oh Lord, way to go, agents on my phone. We be on the road like we on the boat. And that is time. It's a shame today hasn't gone as planned, but um, we had a good run out last time. I'm clearly not making it through to the next round, so I'll say my farewells now. It has been an absolute pleasure being part of this competition, and hopefully I'll be back in the future. Right, so it's been a really tough day today. Uh, we only managed, I think, three fish, um, but we do a fish that we really, really needed. 
We've got all our bonus top water points. We had a fantastic 80 centimetre pike, also a lovely perch towards the end. The weather's getting really, really hot. So we decided to uh, finish it off by coming to the pub, get a nice cold drink and finish up fishing early. Fingers crossed it's enough to get me through. So just had my last cast of uh, the YPC 2023. Um, absolutely devastated with myself. Um, blanked, never, never hooked a single fish. Very, very disappointed with my scores because I know I'm a better angler than that. Um, hopefully, YPC 2024 happens and if it does, um, I'm up for the challenge of going for it again, if, if Dan will have me. I've really enjoyed myself and I, there's a hell of a lot of really good talent in the, uh, in, in the whole of the group, in, in, in both groups and uh, a, a lot of effort that's gone in behind the scenes. Um, the amount of venues that we've all covered over the week, it must be incredible. But me myself, I know I've hit in practice about 10 venues and times that by all the other anglers as well. And the miles that have been put in, phenomenal. What can I say? I, try, I really did try my best and my venues never produced. So thanks for watching. And unfortunately, you won't be seeing me in the final. It's been a real tough day, but at the same time, it's been great fun been a bit of an adventure really we've been all over the place we've tried multiple venues we finished on this stunning lake i've been in the lake i've electrocuted myself twice on the electric fence that goes around it i've impaled myself on my own hooks but i wouldn't have it any other way it's been absolutely brilliant a massive thank you to gunky uk they have been so supportive they're just absolutely brilliant um, it's been an honor to uh, to represent them so i don't think i've made enough I don't think I've got enough points to make it to the final because I just didn't fill my card. Just could not get that final pike. But um, if this is it, hopefully see you next year. Uh, it's been great fun and hope you've enjoyed it. Awesome. Well, I had a brill time. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Cameraman's the man. Um, conclusions. Don't think I've quite done enough couple of pike upgrades. I think my venue selection has been poor today. I think that's where I've made my mistakes. Uh, probably should have kept a running water. Um, just when it was so hot and so flat, these lakes, they're just really stagnant uh, in the middle of the day. It was only when a bit of wind picked up and had a bite at the end. So um, had a wicked time though. Thanks for tuning in guys. Um, I've had a brilliant time. I hope you've enjoyed it too. And fingers crossed, I make it to the final, but I don't think I have. Best of luck, guys. See you soon. After this tough day, the optimism of most of the participants is limited, but that's fishing. And hand on heart, the conditions, the heat, the total lack of wind and so on were simply put, crap. Nevertheless, we saw a lot of good fish over the two days of fishing in this group and met a fun bunch of very competent anglers. It's a shame that we now have to say goodbye to three of them. So guys, that was really, really exciting. A really, really good day's fishing on the first day. The second day was much more difficult. You know the results, but they're really excited to find out. Let's go through it. For two of you, it was a tough tournament. You tried hard, you all caught fish, but um, unfortunately for Tom and for George, it wasn't enough this time. Fifth and fourth place, well done, guys. Well One of you were really, 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 really good. You almost managed to get over 500 points. I heard you also lost a couple of fish um, that would have got you over the 500 points. You won the group, a great performance. Well done, Chris. So, and then there's two of you left. It was an incredible battle. There weren't that many fish caught today, but it was still extremely exciting. Tom, you started off obviously like a rocket on the first day, had a really, really strong day. Ash, you were slow but steady, kept catching a fish every now and again. 
I can tell you between the two of you guys, there was one point difference. <laughs> one point. <laughs> I'm sorry for the, I'm really sorry for the guy who came third. Happy for the guy who came second. Ash, well done, you're in the final. Tom, I'm really sorry. <laughs> A really, really exciting group, guys. We now know who our finalists are gonna be. I hope you're looking forward to the final and we're gonna see you there. See you soon, ciao guys. Okay, folks, that concludes the group stages of the YPC Bank UK. Next week, we'll show you the first of two final episodes where Chris Bartle and Ash Costa from Group B meet A.D. Mason and Ryan Dabbs from Group A. We promise you better fishing conditions and plenty of action. So make sure you're there when the first YPC Bank UK is decided. Next Sunday, 6 p.m. And until then, go catch yourselves a few fish. Please leave us a comment or a like. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to this channel. Ciao.